Okay, there's a little bit, but. My clock just told me it was 11. So I'm gonna wait just a second, see um, the chance for people to hop on and see what's going on. I'm going to give it just another minute. My schedule is so backwards today, guys. I almost forgot about this. For some reason in my head, it feels more like a Monday than a Wednesday. But then I also have another thing that was scheduled for tomorrow that I thought was today at 1 o'clock. It's, um, it's been an interesting morning, so I hope you guys are doing really well. And if I... Um, Come, it's interesting today because this one's scheduled for like different ways to um, increase your energy and whatnot. And today I happen to be really tired. So uh, the universe always works out beautifully. <laughs> so when I'm talking today, I'm talking about stuff that I'm actually going through today, as well as um, stuff that I deal with on a regular basis. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, for those of you who haven't been or haven't had a chance to watch the two previous videos, I usually try to find a format, or I've been trying to follow a format of figuring out the um, what, whys, and hows of the most common questions and um, situations that I run across with my clients. I'm trying to make this in such a way that they're all kind of consistent. Um, but with energy, sometimes things get a little blurry. If I get, you know, confusing or off topic. Are you guys um, have any questions? Feel free to put them in the comment box. If I don't reply to them right away, it's because I'm trying to keep to um, be efficient with my time and not get off track or get confused. And so, uh, just put them in the comment box or message me directly, and I'll get back to you as soon as we're done here. Okay, so um, our brains love to solve problems. That's pretty much why it exists, right? So most of us, when we start having problems of feeling tired or sleepy, um, even if it's temporary or if it's chronic, our brains immediately want to start saying things like, maybe I didn't sleep well, or maybe it's my hormones, or maybe it's stress from work, or, you know, our brains want to run off into um, solving a problem and getting to the why immediately, because they want to fix it. This is something that needs to be fixed, it's something that needs to be changed. But it's really not the most effective way to go around um, addressing increasing energy or really anything. The first step, as always, is to get present. Um, you need to identify the what. And again, be careful with this. I'm not talking about, well, you know, my hormones are changing or I'm, um, you know, my kids were up all night or something like that. When I say what, I'm talking about getting very descriptive on how you actually feel right now. Almost imagine that you're trying to um, maybe explain to an eight-year-old <laughs> over the phone what tired feels like. You got to kind of become your own nosy neighbor. So start by asking a tons of questions. Is my body feeling physically tired? Is it, you know, muscle aches or my neck is stiff or my feet are tired? Um, not because of, but almost as if you were to have done more than you normally do. Or is your brain tired? Um, if you're having problems thinking or problems tracking, almost like, again, just pretend, almost as if you had been reading reports for eight hours or going through spreadsheets or something like that. Or is it a stress tired? Is it emotional tired? Start asking your questions right away with what are you feeling? Not why, not how, not blaming it on anything, not a circumstance, like very descriptive, very specific on what you're feeling. Because pretty much any question that we run across in life can be answered, but you first have to start asking the right question, right? You can't start, um, you can't solve a problem if you're trying to solve for something else. So you, when you're saying getting present, talking about your what, figuring out exactly um, how you're feeling, it's really that. You're trying to identify the right question before you move forward. When we're trying to deal with the why, which is normally the second step in this, we run into a lot, um, I call it almost like an unseen trap. Our society has gotten to where we put not only busy on a pedestal, but make it almost um, a necessity of being accepted. What I mean is like, how many conversations have you had with people where you're really just taking turns 
lining out each other's to-do lists. <laughs> you know, they'll say something, well, I, you know, I got up at five o'clock in the morning and I had to do a load of laundry and then I swept before I got the kids up for school, then I went to work and blah, 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 blah. And then of course it's your turn to go through your day of everything you had to do. And at the end of the conversation, <laughs> y'all are really just exchanging um, how busy you were. And it becomes a form of almost judgment and comparison and there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of it. Um, even if just a simple conversation starts with, hey, what did you do today? We feel this need to like say all this stuff that we did, right? Because the busier we were, are, the more productive we are. And the more productive we are, the more special we are. Kind of, it becomes this whole judging, judging ourselves to a society standard, judging ourselves based on our friends, our family, what their activity levels are right. And so being busy in and of itself is not a bad thing, but what happens is when we start comparing and trying to one-up each other all the time or feeling like you have to be more and more and more productive, right? That's where you get into the, um, into the, when it gets difficult trying to identify the whys is why are you doing this? Are you doing this because you feel like you need to overexhaust yourself or overextend yourself or overgive in some kind of way in order to be accepted or be considered worthy or <clears throat> so when it, you, it gets really really slippery so what you've got to start doing first and foremost when you're dealing with the whole why am i tired is coming to a place that's pretty neutral all right i mean um it's really okay as awkward as it feels at first to have respond to somebody what did you do today well i was really tired so i took it easy or um i struck my mornings where they're pretty peaceful because i want to you know be have the rest of my day be peaceful so i begin my day that way so just be careful that um, when you're trying to go in to describe the, you know, what you're feeling or why you're feeling it, that it's really, that it's not because it's coming from a place that's outside of you. You're not trying to push yourself beyond your limits. Now, physically tired, of course, is pretty, pretty easy to explain. You know, my legs are tired, my knees are tired, my feet are tired. Even if you didn't do more than normal, you can describe that one pretty easy, especially to others. Um, but we also go into this when that's why I call the why it's a little bit blurry. Do we always need a reason to be tired? What if your body doesn't need, what if you just are tired? You know, what if you just, you don't have to blame sleep or you don't have to blame hormones or your kids or work or whatever. Today, my body's just tired. The same thing for your brain. Today, my brain is tired. Um, today, my emotions are tired. I just don't want to deal with anybody else's emotions today. When you can get to that point of being neutral, as to the why, it's almost like um, doesn't always need to be a why, kind of like the matrix and there's not always a spoon. Sometimes you just are. And when you can get to that point of being neutral is really the first kind of, yay, congratulations, you did it, to be able to move forward to the next because the judging and the comparison and always feeling like you need to be busy and constantly moving is part of the reason that we're as a society are always tired anyway. So the next thing is, okay, now what am I supposed to do, right? I'm really tired and I have all this stuff that I absolutely have to do. I really need to do it. And I know you're saying, so if I were to tell you something, honor your body. Don't push yourself. Be tired if you're tired. Sit and rest. Um, leave the dirty dishes on the counter, you know? And there's all this list of have tos. This is where with my clients, I get the most resistance. There really is nothing that you absolutely have to do. There's no such thing. It's, it's like a construct that we've made up in our head, right? I mean, think about it. I didn't have to go to work today. I absolutely did not. I enjoy having electricity and a house and like air conditioning. <laughs> so I chose to go to work because I want to pay those bills, but I didn't have to. I could have stayed in bed all day if I wanted to. Um, the same thing even with, I mean, as simple as taking a shower. I don't have to take a shower. I just refuse not to run around and stinking all day long. <laughs> so I choose to take a shower. So once you become neutral about what your body's feeling or what your brain's feeling or what your emotions are feeling, then you can start having a conversation about what do I actually have to do? And when have becomes choose, you're putting the control back within yourself. You no longer reacting to outside forces, right? I choose to take a shower. I'm choosing to clean my house because I don't want to live in filth. I'm choosing to go to work because I really like paying the electric bill. When you switch those things to something you can control, there is going to be an almost immediate energy shift because you're no longer reacting. You're in the driver's seat. And so I can choose not to do the dishes today. Yeah, that means I might have to do them tomorrow. You're not gonna to get away from the consequences of whatever choice you make, 
But if I'm choosing to do them tomorrow, then I'm still in control. When you do this and you start to shift your questions or shift your perspective, your body actually follows suit. And you might find that whatever um, energy that you need to get done what you choose to get done that day, well, it just kind of, it feels like it's magically appearing. But what you're doing is you're taking yourself out of victim status and into a more um, proactive position in your own life. And that does miracles for most people when it comes to, uh, you know, getting the things done that they want to get done. Now on to the physical side. I got a lot of questions. What herbs can I do to increase my energy in that conversation? Before we even have herbs, water. Seriously, dehydration is physically exhausting. Drink your water. Now, um, now that we're talking about drinking things, the first thing that um, comes to mind is caffeine. I really like caffeine. It's a very powerful medicine on top of anything else. Um, some people use it for concentration. Some people have it for breathing problems as well as energy. I love my morning coffee. But just remember when you're dealing with caffeine, that caffeine is a pulling herb. It pulls from you rather than gives you anything. It's almost like um, it's a form of energy debt. You're borrowing energy from your future self. Because caffeine stops your brain from being able to receive the tired signals. The tired signals don't go away. Your brain's just not receiving it at that moment. But just like if you're going to have a credit card debt, the tired doesn't go away. You know, the debt doesn't go away. It's going to catch up to you eventually. That's why you have these big crashes when it comes to energy drinks and um, all these colorful and fruity flavored sugar and caffeine drinks everybody's drinking all the time. There's nothing wrong with anything but that caffeine. Just understand that when you're borrowing energy from yourself, you're eventually going to have to pay it back. There are lots of um, healthy alternatives to coffee. I'm not going to go into specific products now, but if you have questions, please put them in the comments or message me or something like that. But the ones that I like to use tend to have herbs along with vitamins and minerals. So in those, rather than pulling energy from myself to push myself forward, you're actually going to get natural energy from the product that you're using. Um, it's going to replenish your vitamins or minerals or you're going to be replenishing the water in your cells. So there are many alternatives. Look for things that way. As far as um, specific herbs, for long-term support and stress management, ashwagandha is kind of my favorite. It's not an immediate reaction thing, so it's not like, again, not like a caffeine. You're not going to take it and immediately get a boost of energy. But for long-term stress management and energy support, ashwagandha is my favorite. It's an Ayurvedic herb, which is um, from India, and the word means something along the lines of stamina of the horse. It, it, that's really what it's for. It's for long-term stress management and um, energy and sleep support. For things like memory, if you just need, like if it's a brain thing in the afternoon, you're getting some brain fog, things like ginseng, ginkgo, rosemary, um, those are herbs that you use to just kind of wake up your brain. You know, you're going to increase the circulation to your brain, so kind of pop things up. There are other things like nettle and I can't even, I don't, not <laughs> Eleutherio, I guess is how you pronounce it. I, I can spell it out for you if you need the more specific. Those are kind of a physical boost um, for if you are serious about you know working out, weightlifting um, for athletes. That combination of things will give you a physical boost. And then sometimes I like things that just wake up my senses. Um, hibiscus, peppermint, ginger. Because when my senses pop up, then you kind of can look at the world in a fresh way. You know, you get this tingle or you get the cold from the mint or you get kind of that tangy from the hibiscus. It just kind of kind of awakens you and helps you focus on that moment in the moment. And so those are some of the herbs that I use um, for myself and with clients, depending on your particular situation. So hopefully this wasn't too confusing. If it was, I will answer any and all questions. Like I said at the beginning, I'm tired today too. So this presentation was either a good or bad timing, depending on how you look at it. But thank you guys so much for listening. And I'm going to be back on next week. This series is going to be a total of 10 videos. Um, and you'll be able to access them in my member vault once they're all done. So just let me know questions, suggestions, comments, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys and have a great day.